A lot of articles and experiments have been done to demonstrate that particles don't actually travel between point A and point B. And what happens is when a particle is measured or detected at point B, then its wave-like or particle-like reality is brought into existence. And so prior to this, it, you just have a probability of finding a particle where you look, it, but it doesn't actually exist there. Reality becomes, when it's measured or detected, it's brought into existence by that measurement or that detection. Before that, it is just a probability. There's a superposition where a particle travels through every possible path through the universe between point A and point B, and then when you measure or detect it at point B, then it collapses into one path taken. But that's just one mm, uh, explanation or more of an analogy or metaphor for what's actually happening. In reality, what's happening is when a particle is measured, detected by a human, then the particle, in every sense of the word, becomes real. And then by bringing that particle into reality, into existence, then it creates a past history for that particle and it creates a path history for the travel of that particle. So up until you measure it, um, it, it doesn't actually exist as a thing, it's just a probability of finding a thing if you look in different places. So if you look here, maybe there's a 40% probability that the particle will be there. And if you look here, maybe there's a 90% probability that you're, you'll find your particle there. But the particle in and of itself is not actually there. It's only when you look that it becomes, it's rendered. Scientists accept this as reproducible results. They've done these experiments over and over and over and they keep getting the same conclusion. And so they just accept it. And we accept it because they tell us that this is what happens and this is how the universe works. In a lot of ways, this is very similar to magic. Except, because it comes from science journals, we somehow trust it as being more real than a magical story of particles that pop into existence when human beings look at them, and then when we stop looking at them, then they go back to not being real. How do you draw the line between nonsense story magic and scientific results? Because we're at the point now where that line is gone. And the only difference between the two is who is telling you the story. So if someone is telling you magically when you see light, then you're bringing that light into existence. If that's just the crazy lady that lives down the street telling you this, then that's just a magical nonsense crazy story. But if you read it in a scientific journal, then it's science and we accept it and it's truth. And that's what we've done. This is what we're doing right now. This is now an established fact of science. In the movie The Mission, this is a movie from the olden days, the 80s or something, the baddie at one point is talking about the bad things that he's done, and he says, what happened was unfortunate but inevitable because we must work in the world, and thus is the world. Then the hero, Altamiro, replies, No, thus have we made the world, thus have I made it. This is one of my favorite quotes of all time, and because really, that is what quantum physics is reinforcing with these findings, this idea that we are participating in the bringing into existence of our world and at 
at a lower level, I think for me, this quote is saying, you create the world that you live in. We together create the world that we live in. So we can justify uh, bad behaviors or bad choices that are harmful to others that benefit us by saying, you know, this is how the world works and this is what I have to do and no one can blame me because that's just how the world works. No, we every day by the actions that we take and by the choices that we make, we are creating the world. So every time you choose something, every time you act, you're creating what's normal, what behavior is acceptable, and you are to everyone around you, everybody else. So when you look around you and you say, everybody else is doing this, so it's okay for me to do it. Well, when you're doing it, you become that everybody else. So if we make more moral choices, if we act in ways that are more moral, then we're making the world a more moral place. Because then others look to our behavior and look at the choices that we make in our lives. And we become the reference frame that guides their behavior and their choices. And I think that that is more important than we'd like to believe. And so the one conclusion from this evidence of the scientific experiments about the photons and the electrons being brought into existence by detection or measurement, human observation, it doesn't map on directly or it doesn't lead to conclusions about morality or about how you choose to live your life. But I think that there's a mirroring there. It's just the, the concept that every day, everything you observe, everything that you do, every choice that you make, every thought that you think, you are creating the reality. Either at this basic level where your observation of the photons hitting your eye brings them into existence, or at the more abstract level where the choices that you make the, the people that are around you are going to use your behavior and your choices to compare to their own, to, to create a standard of normal against which they'll compare their own choices and their own behavior. And so in that sense, we have the power to create the world that we want to live in by contributing to the standards, the ethics, and the moral rules, guidelines by which we behave. Yes. So, <laughs> all of that is just to say, I really believe that we can make this world a place that's better for human flourishing, that's better for us all as individuals. Ha <laughs>